Implicit differentiation problems can be tough, and so can trig, so when you put them together that really makes a nasty combo. But it really doesn't have to be that way. Trig problems in calculus, and especially with implicit differentiation problems, they're really not any different than any other implicit differentiation problem. So to simplify the whole process and show you how to deal with trig, I wanted to show you an example of how you can solve pretty easily a trig implicit differentiation problem. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. So here's the problem I'm gonna be showing you to prove to you that implicit differentiation with trig is really not any different than regular implicit differentiation. We're gonna find dy dx using implicit differentiation with this equation, which is one plus x equals sine of x times y squared. So again, we're gonna use the same trick that I like to use in my other implicit differentiation videos, where we first write down which letter in here is our variable and which letter is our function. Well, obviously we only have x's and y's, and we can see right here, this is our key giveaway of what is a function and what is a variable. dy dx is the thing we're looking for. Well, that tells us the thing on top, the y, is gonna be the function, and the thing on bottom is gonna be the variable. So what that means is y is a function, and it is a function of x, which is the variable of that function. So the reason why this is important is since we're finding dy dx, what we're gonna do is find the derivative with respect to x, we're gonna find d dx of this entire equation, both sides of the equation. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. Well, finding d dx of x is gonna be very different from finding d dx of y. And the reason is because x is a variable and y is a function. Well, if we're finding the derivative of x with respect to x, that's just gonna be one, right? The derivative of your variable is gonna behave the way you would expect a derivative to behave. But the derivative of y with respect to x is not just gonna be one. It's actually gonna be dy dx. Because finding the derivative of y, which is some unknown function of x, we aren't really going to be able to find the derivative of some unknown function of x, but what we can do is write dy dx because this, this notation literally means the derivative of y with respect to x. So this is a key distinction right here as we work through this problem. We want to make sure that when we take the derivative of something that just has x's in it, it behaves the way you expect it to behave. And when you take the derivative of something with y's in it, you have to remember that y is another function within that. So usually when you take the derivative of something with y's in it, like in this case, sine of x times y squared, we're probably gonna have to use chain rule, product rule, quotient rule, something like that. You're not just gonna be able to you know, say the derivative of y is one because it does not work like that. But let's go ahead and jump on into taking this derivative. So taking the derivative with respect to x of a constant is always gonna be zero. So the derivative of one is just gonna be zero. The derivative of x with respect to x, like we said over here, it's just gonna be one. So the derivative of this whole left side of our equation is just one, zero plus one. Now, to take the derivative of this trig piece, obviously we have x's and y's in here, and not only that, we have x's and y's being plugged into a sine function. So that kind of tells us we're gonna to have to use chain rule. So chain rule says we're gonna do the derivative of our outside function, leave the inside function alone, and then multiply that by the derivative of our inside function. Well, clearly this x times y squared is what's being plugged into sine. So we can treat sine as our outside function and then x times y squared as our inside function. So again, derivative of the outside function is the derivative of sine and the derivative of sine x is cosine x. So taking the derivative of our outside function is gonna give us cosine of whatever our inside function is, which is, again, just gonna be left alone by the chain rule. And then we have to multiply this by the derivative of our inside function. So we're gonna then take the derivative of x, y squared. Well, to take the derivative of x, y squared, we have to use product rule because now we have the derivative of one piece times another piece, x times y squared. So we'll kind of do that as a separate problem down here to take the derivative of x, y squared, we need to use product rule. So product rule says we're gonna pick a function f and pick a function g. So it doesn't really matter what you pick. Let's just say f is gonna be x, g is gonna be y squared. And then you have to figure out y prime, which again, the derivative of x with respect to x 
we said at the beginning is just going to be 1, so that's just 1. Derivative of g, g prime, is going to be the derivative of y squared. Since y is a function, just taking the derivative of y squared is actually going to require a chain rule again, because we have this function y being plugged into another function which is squaring it. So again, chain rule says to do the derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, so the outside is our squared piece. So that just tells us we can do the product rule. So we'll bring the two down in front, leave our inside function alone, and then lower the power by one. Lowering it to one just makes it one, y to the first is just y. And then we have to multiply it by the derivative of the inside function. Well, the inside function is just y, which again, y is a function. The derivative of y is just dy dx. So we're gonna get times dy dx. And now product rule says we can just cross multiply these. So we're gonna get f times g prime, so x times all this. And then f prime times g, so one times y squared is just gonna be y squared. So we're gonna get this times that plus this times that, giving us this, which again, this is the derivative of x times y squared, which we had right here. So now we need to replace this whole piece with this derivative that we found here. And now that we've taken the derivative, what we want to start doing is basically moving all the stuff that doesn't have a dy dx in it over to the other side of our equation. Since we only have a single dy dx term in this entire equation, that's not going to be too difficult. We can kind of just start moving pieces over one by one. So first of all, we have this piece here times this piece here. We can divide the cosine of xy squared over to the other side of our equation. So we'll get one over cosine of xy squared equals 2xy dy dx plus y squared and then we can subtract over this y squared term to the other side of our equation and then we can just divide over the 2xy over to the other side But the problem here now is that this is kind of a messy equation. You don't really like to have fractions within fractions. So what we can actually do is rewrite this instead of all this divided by 2xy, we can rewrite this as all this times one over 2xy. And then we can distribute that to both of these terms. So doing that is gonna give us one over 2xy cosine of xy squared minus y squared over 2xy. But we can simplify it even further now by canceling. We have two, you know, y to the second on the top. We have a y on the bottom. We can just cancel that with the y there. So we just get one over 2xy cosine of xy squared minus y over 2x. So that's it. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button down below and hit the subscribe button as well. Don't let the YouTube algorithm decide which videos you get to see. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you catch all of them. Together we'll keep crushing it all turn long. Thanks and see you next time.